Welcome everyone to another episode of Unearthing the Supernatural's Evidence Review. Tonight we're going to be discussing the return to Vulture City. Don't mean to intrude. Who's the other side of it? This way's low. Um, historically, the Yeitso ate people. Oh, shit. Who you're born for? Who's your father's claim? 23rd General. His captain, he has uh, one of his captains of his legions is named Darkus. So this episode was a very honorable and fun episode for us at Unearthing the Supernatural. On this episode, we were joined by renowned investigators Jay and Marie Yates. And I want to give you guys a shout out. Thank you guys so much for everything. You guys are awesome and amazing. Joined by world famous investigators Jay and Marie Yates, the caretakers of Vulture City. The crew will investigate the haunted buildings of this old west town. Vulture City, known to be Unearthing the Supernatural's launching platform and one of the key places where we unearthed the ancient legend of giants being buried underneath these sacred grounds. But we didn't know that we were going to be going into the darker side of Vulture City. The still active gold mine at Vulture City, Arizona was said to be ramping up production. The type of spirits that we interacted with at Vulture City the second time around was, needless to say, darker. And we dove a little bit deeper into the legend of Vulture City and the giants that were buried there. For this one, I believe the feelings were a little bit different because our intent of what we were trying to capture and unearth during this investigation were different. So Vulture City in itself had a little bit more of an eerie feeling from the first time we investigated there. What we encountered and what we revealed was a little bit more detail into the evil operations of what was truly being released and what was truly the agenda of dark beings in Vulture City. We encountered beings of a different caliber. One particular being is known as Narkad, This demon is said to be the dark representative of the Naga entities of Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Indian, Eastern, and South American beliefs. Narkad is a dark representative of this race, as his name is spread across the world, and his deeds echo throughout time. He reigns as one of the captains of higher rank than some of the Goetia of Hell, and commands armies within the nether regions of creation. With the body of a snake and the torso of a devil, it is said this demon has poisons that can kill even the gods themselves. Many high-ranking beings of the darkness come to Narkon in seek of such poisons and concoctions. The king snakes themselves bow to his presence. What purpose could Narkon be here in Vulture City? Does it have to do with the mind and the summoning of the cryptids and giants of old? Now. The Naga is a particular race of entity, as known as being half human, half snake entities. They are known to manipulate the elements, and they are known to be very powerful creatures that are not to be trifled with. Nargod actually made his presence known in the Assay building. When we were in the Assay building, we were trying to dive a little bit deeper as to the true agenda of these dark entities that were there at Vulture City. And trying to uncover as to why the dark energy seemed to have been manifesting even more. I'm not gonna die. You, you guys have tried. I think one of the most compelling pieces of evidence that we captured at Vulture City was an orb manifesting in front of Jay, kind of morphing its shape and going inside of Jay's mouth. 
Now, there's a lot of controversy when it comes to orb-like phenomenon, whether it be light particles, dust particles, or lens flares. And I can tell you, out of my 24 years being on this earth, this is the first time I've ever actually seen an orb change its shape in such a way that it fits perfectly into somebody's mouth like that. And that really is mind mind boggling to me. All dead. That is the first time I've ever actually seen an orb change its shape in the way that it did. So my most memorable piece of evidence was when Narkot himself was actually responding to me in the spiritual language. He was actually challenging us and demanding blood. <laughs> And so we were kind of going back and forth with our conversation and we were asked to break the flashlight. Now, my particular flashlight, I had the ability to extend it and kind of focus the light beam. And so my, the first thought that came to my mind was to just pop it and make it seem like I broke the flashlight. When I did that, I made a loud noise, sounded like I broke the flashlight and I shined the light at the REM pod. And surprisingly, the REM pod went off. And it would, not only was it going off, it was going wild. To me, that was intense because not only did I did do what the spirits were asking, but I did it in a presentable way that showed the, I won't even say excitement, but their reactions like, he did it. He actually broke the flashlight and he can hear us. And it was a key piece of evidence in my mind because it, translated to intelligence it translated to these beings not only speaking in the, tra in the spiritual language but also requesting something of us and me reacting and performing this deed and then reacting in real time so one of my most memorable moments in this investigation had to have been to be able to experience investigating with jay and marie yates and with their knowledge and their history with the town it was such a great experience to be able to be firsthand and investigate with them firsthand and see how Vulture City interacts with us as well as them. So that had to have been one of my most favorite memories here at Vulture City. I would have to say my most memorable moments of the Return to Vulture City episode would have to be where I was actually in the blacksmith shop. Now there we interacted with a being that we hadn't interacted with before. Now there were some buildings that we didn't actually have time to investigate our first time through Vulture City. Now this second time around going through Vulture City, I made it a, I made it a mission of mine to go interact with the blacksmith. The blacksmith shop at Vulture City is known to have some more violent activity, more flamboyant activity, more 
loud activity is the best word to describe it with things being tossed on the roof uh, growling and yelling for the women to actually leave the building now I made it apparent to go into the blacksmith shop to see if I can speak with the blacksmith himself because as you can see for us being unearthing the supernatural unearthing the supernatural is known to be a little bit different in the fact that we wear armor and we carry around weapons blessed weapons and one particular piece that is a part of our arsenal is the katana and I thought it'd be unique to be able to interact with the blacksmith and show him a great piece of work. So once we made contact with the blacksmith, I wanted him to inspect one of our blades. And so when I placed the blade down on the table, he interacted with us in a way that actually surprised me where our K2 meters were going off, our REM pods, and even our spirit box is reacting to him literally inspecting the blade and admiring it. So, Mr. Blacksmith, I want to show you something here. This is a weapon that is made, its original design was made overseas in Japan. I want you to examine it and let me know what you think about it. Its design, its composition, the craftsmanship that got put into it. Light that up if you really like it. Yeah. Awesome, glad you like it. Shit. That's crazy. Awesome. Don't mean to intrude. Yeah, here's the other side of it. Look at this dirty one. This way is low. One of the most memorable moments and something that I look forward to seeing the result of is I challenged him and kind of placed an order with him. I said, take a look at this blade. And if you can recreate this blade on your own, I challenge you to recreate this blade on your own. And if you can, I will offer you payment in return. I'd like to be able to get a call from Jay one day and see a nice, beautiful sword laying on the table. If there is a nice, beautiful sword Whoa. laying on that table. I went red. Yeah, see? <laughs> if there's gonna be a nice, beautiful sword laid on the table oh, right here. I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a gold piece. I'll leave it here for you. You can take God, it. If the guest comes walking out to me in a couple weeks with a fucking samurai sword. <laughs> they definitely give you guys a call. Like, hey, yeah, place an order. <laughs> Your order's in. <laughs> if you can do that, yeah, that'd be awesome. I am honor bound if for some reason one day there becomes a katana blade that shows up there in the blacksmith. Everyone that works at Vulture City knows that. If there's a, black, a blade that shows up there, it's my order being fulfilled. One thing I learned during this investigation is the power of teamwork and the wealth of knowledge and history to where nothing is really set on everything that you know or what you think you know. There's a lot more history that goes beyond human comprehension. And I think with the power of teamwork, we were able to dive deeper into the knowledge and history of the Vulture City Ghost Town. What I learned at the return to Vulture City was that I need to be a little bit more mindful into evil and their dark agenda that they tend to have. I need to understand that there are more forces at work than most people would like to realize. And when it comes to us at Unearthing the Supernatural, us being mindful of who we interact with and always working to help the spirits in need and to pay acknowledgement to the never-ending battle that good and evil have. I want to say thank you to you all for watching this. If you want to check out the full episode, link is in the description. Many blessings to you, and I hope you all have a great night. Everyone have a blessed night. And remember, we are few of many. One story of thousands. Let us hear yours. Oh, shit. I'm not.
not gonna die. You, you guys will try. Don't stop, never stop.